What's up, everybody? Um, Mitchell Mesenbrink looked pretty good at U20s. Um, we're going to take a look at one of his attacks that he attempted and scored a lot. Um, and more specifically, uh, his kind of finish options from there. And something that is a little bit different, but kind of similar to, I guess, like an old school kind of low single type finish. But a uh, little bit different attack to get there. So let's take a look. So here's the attack. It's an inside reach, single leg. Here he drives to his feet. Always pretty good to get to your feet for a finish. Let's slow it down. So a lot of times, he'll end up be um, head on the opposite side of what he's gonna attack. And it'll roll underneath to get the guy kind of falling over top. So here we see him snap, and his head rolls all the way underneath as he attacks. The other thing we're going to notice a lot is as he reach for this guy's leg, sometimes it's at the knee, sometimes it's at the ankle, and sometimes it's somewhere in between. So when he reaches, his shoulders will turn inside shoulder forward to get a little bit more distance and to kind of help slip this guy over top and then as he drops his collar tie hand right here we're gonna see his shoulders start to turn back in so he can rotate head inside or rotate back um, to the opponent's leg to get a little bit tighter so there he starts to rotate back and he does this with his knees as well you see his knee drop in and then as he rotates this knee this trail leg knee will follow around to kind of start creating that angle. Oop, follows in. Now this is the, I think the only one where I really saw him get to his feet head inside. So he pretty much just steps his trail leg up, starts driving up to his feet, keeps good head shoulder position all the way through his finish. Um, you know, fairly simple, nice attack, but the next finish is what I would really like to look at. And then of course we'll cover more options as well. So this is the finish that I really want to take a look at. It's really nice, really clean. Sits a guy right to his butt. All right, so again, lots of hard snaps. Um, his head's on the opposite side, but we'll see it kind of fade. Um, a little more forehead to forehead before he attacks. So there we see him slip in front of the guy's head this time before he attacks. And then as he drops again, shoulders rotate, kind of gets the guy to fall over. Shoulders rotate in toward leg, inside reach, inside knee drop. Now here we see him wrap kind of around the calf as his trail leg follows. Now. This is the part of the finish. Uh, this is the hand switch that makes the finish really start to work. All right, so as his backhand follows around, we're gonna see it kind of wrap close to the knee and his inside hand is gonna drop low toward the ankle heel. So here he's got this wrap and knee wrap. So now, with this foot trapped, he's gonna aim his head above the opponent's knee, kind of inner thigh uh, hip area, so that he can continue to drive. So it's almost like a cut down low single finish with his head driving across and his bottom hand pulling leg through. So as he starts to drive, we'll see his head drive across. And you can see the opponent wants to try and bend this leg back to try and get some mobility back in his knee and hip, but he's just gonna knock him straight through with his head position. Again, it's not all the way through the guy's leg. It's hip area, inner thigh area. This hand pulls foot toward far hip, 
head continues to drive across. As soon as his head starts to get free, it'll come across the body and he's gonna immediately start to try and cover far leg. So once it hits, he's trying to cover far leg. Here's another example where he cuts the guy back right away, kind of sits him toward his butt and covers. All right, so here, same kind of head and shoulder action. Head's on opposite sides, gonna roll underneath. Opposite shoulder's gonna rotate in. And then as he penetrates, he's gonna start to swing his shoulders and knee, trail leg knee back around. Now here, we see his head hasn't gone all the way through yet. We're gonna see some examples where his head shoots all the way through and it becomes a little bit different options. So head hasn't gone all the way through yet. As he hits this, this corner, inside hands low, outside hands a little bit higher. I think um, what's really locking this guy's leg in place is this inside hand being low and his head positioned on the inside of their thigh, right at their hip. Uh, area so here we see his head position and as a guy kind of tries to square up and drop to maybe look chest wrap things like that he starts to square up we can see the weight being shifted already where he posts his hand on the back side the opponent's posting his hand on this back side here drives hands pull across and then as he starts to hit his butt that bottom hand is gonna swing up and over top to cover so the opponent can't recover their position as well. And then it's just drive to continue to shift their weight across. Really, really nice. And again, the hand switch here on the attack is super nice. So here we see inside hand at knee to kind of establish control. And then as he starts to swing his other hand and knee around, we see that inside hand is already dropped low toward the heel. And it's just kind of like a low single cutback type finish, but uh, hands are opposite. All right. Here we're gonna start to see where some adjustments are made when the guy kind of floats off that initial cutback type position, kind of gives up a backside angle. All right, so here, same attack. Kind of cut back right away, then drops him down and runs backside corner. Well, rolling underneath, just like before. Inside hand reaching into anchor. This time he anchors pretty low right away. Still, same things are happening. He's swinging around. Now, here we see his head's in pretty good position. It's not all the way through the guy's, uh, underneath the guy's leg and through. But what we will see is when he goes to cut the guy back, he releases this inside hand a little bit early. And as that happens, uh, the opponent is going to be able to pivot his toes around to catch his balance and swing to get a post back here in the mat. So in the previous ones where they cut him back right away, um, he's able to keep the opponent's toes pointed out this direction, which um, stops him from being able to do this pivot motion to get a post back where his butt hit in the other clips. So one more time as he starts to kind of cut him back a little bit we see the force being taken this direction with his hand post right away with his head looks like a low single finish right as that happens he starts to reach with his inside hand opponent is able to turn their foot back away from them and get their post back in the mat 
All right, but now, in doing this, they give up this backside angle. Um, really, uh, really easy to change your direction and then collapse toward the backside. Gets his shoulder on tight, gets his head tight to the leg. Um, once he's here, he's really trapping this guy in place. And um, the more this foot goes outside the opponent's hip, the harder it's gonna be for them to turn in and wizard. So we see, as he starts to adjust, we see the opponent start to reach back. Is he starting to, starting to be able to pivot now since some of the pressure was released as he reaches across? All right. Start to shift weight, but even so, his toes pointed out, it's going to be hard for the opponent to shift weight all the way back into him with their wizard or anything like that. So he tries to collect far foot. Opponent's able to kick out his first time. Step his foot back up. Replaces the head back tight to the leg. And again, we see this heel wrap. And this can, as he starts to rotate his elbow up, can lock the opponent's toe in place and make it point out, which makes it very hard for them to reach back over top and whizzer and uh, get away from the shoulder that way. And he's able to catch far hip on his pivot and ends up running him down for his takedown. So here we're gonna see what happens when his head goes all the way through. And um, this one he kinda loses a little bit control of the leg as he lifts him. So it's gonna look similar right away So as he starts attacking, reaching in, but we can already see his head peeking out on the backside of the opponent's leg instead of kind of even a little bit more in front or on the inner thigh like we saw in the previous clips. So when this happens, it's going to be harder to get this um, cutback motion uh, where you get them to fall back toward their butt. We still see him kind of attempt that kind of motion. As we see as he goes, there's a little bit of a weight shift in rock this way. But since his head's all the way through, he changes the finish into, some people call it waterfall position or backdoor or whatever, where he sits up, head comes up. And in this one, he kind of loses control of the leg, turns back in, ends up scoring his takedown anyway. Here's the same idea. Head goes through, gets into this kind of mid-lift position. Um, kind of attempts like, I think Yanni was the first one to kind of do that finish. Um, but similar attack, inside anchor, kind of tries to pivot around, but head is definitely all the way through this time, for sure, out the back. So he's gonna lift, come up. All right, so this head kind of stays more in front, it's likely cut back finish or maybe even to his feet. If it starts to go through, he's gonna end up in this split middle position. And then here he locks his hands and gets an exposure score. Here we're gonna see another adjustment. Um, kind of when there's space, he'll shift his head outside instead of um, going any kind of head inside finish option. So, Kind of same type of attack, a little bit more touch and go here. Still inside anchor low, still looking to shift head to the inside as this foot swings around. And then here, uh, the opponent catches an underhook, so there's gonna be a little bit more space, as we can see with his head as the guy gets his leg away. I'm trying to continue this cutback motion that he likes to do will result in pretty poor position. If he, if he commits hard leaning to it, he'll end up leaning all the way out into, into a bad position out there. So instead, 
He's going to shift, just roll his head outside, and then kind of build it into a head outside attack. So when he attacks in and head stays in front of the leg, he'll end up looking for a cut back or feet option. And if his head goes all the way through, he'll hit that split middle position. And if there's space, when he starts to do that cut back finish, his head will roll out to the side and look for a head outside option as his finish. Here we're gonna see him run through a couple different options. Um, he's seeing his initial attack, kind of looks cut back, head slips through, comes up, kind of back door angle, then head rolls outside. And then he gets himself in a little bit of trouble here um, with the position he was in when he rolled his head out, which somehow he worms his way out of it, but you know, pretty sure if that's me, I'm getting pinned. So, um, same type of attack, inside reach, drops his inside hand low, starts to shift that weight out to the outside, looking for cutback, head ends up going through. So he lifts. Now as he continues through this position, he'll trap bottom foot in the mat, keep another one tight to his chest on the backside. You can see that he's gotta be pulling this down since we can't see the opponent's foot. And as he moves through this position, he's gonna rotate out. As he rotates out, now he's in more of a backside finish option. Where he's kind of trapping that guy's leg in the mat a little bit like we saw before again anchor low and inside to try and stop the guy from pivoting his toe looks to reach backside ends up on single leg now as the guy squares up we're gonna see where he's gonna roll his head out so opponent starts to sprawl off this direction and here comes the head roll now, as he rolls his head out, we can see that his weight is more toward the side his head's on, to the outside, which is definitely not where you typically want it in an offensive position. You typically want to use your head to drive across, right? So, also, he's got this leg sticking out to the side, which can't do much to help drive in this direction. All it can really do is maybe give some balance, but mostly it'll be pushing in this direction if he pushes at all. And he's likely not pushing at all because I don't think he wants to go that way. All right. But as the opponent slides off, we can see they catch kind of a near side cradle, which is why it's really important when you roll your head out that you try to um, shift your inside knees or your inside knee and your outside knees so both of these out this direction so that you can get some posts out here to drive back across in with your head like a normal drive across high crotch or double finish and you know I still I mean this guy's got cradle locked up he threatens cradle of his own going over the guy's head which is good I guess and somehow arms his way out of it it's on top scores the position anyway all right here's just a little bonus um, it's the same attack but he actually misses and it's always good to have some kind of clear or follow-up option um, if you're gonna be shooting an attack uh, a specific attack a lot so that if you do miss you can recover and or score so you see the same kind of attack he starts to shift Controls elbow after he misses. Now, you're going to see him attack his far leg. Now, he's going to step and pivot. Um, similar to, I mean, even just a normal, like, so we call it sucker drag or dragging out of a front headlock. So he steps and kind of pivots. And then it actually ends up, this hand's going to slip off and ends up in this normal drag out position from that, uh, angle and then pivot drag right into his go behind just a little bonus technically not the attack but an option to recover 
if you miss and get stuck underneath. So there you go.